Now, what are the steps for complex numbering? So I described to you the document that we're going to have. Let me run through that one more time. We're going to have four sections, a cover page, a section with table of contents and table of authorities, body of the document, and then we're going to have an appendix. Now for this part, I really find it works better if you just kind of follow me and don't try to do it because there's just too many steps involved. And I think it will really make sense to you if you just follow me and, and I'll show you how, to, how I'm going to do this. So first off, I'm going to get a new, blank new document. And I'm just going to give you a, a, um, a skeleton document, if you will. So first thing I want to do is I go through this document, I'm going to section it. Now we learn every document starts with one section. Notice here it says section 1. So it sec says section 1 down here. When I insert a section break, I'm going to have two sections. And again, I have to insert section breaks if I want different page numbering throughout my document. All right, so step number one, I'm going to section my document. So what I'm going to do is type some, um, some text and insert section breaks. Section breaks to me were a little bit hard to find. To find them, they're on the page layout tab in the page setup group under breaks. There is your next page section break. All right, so section one is just going to be the cover page. So I'm going to put cover page. And then I'm going to insert a section break. I click on breaks and choose next page. Now notice, now it says section two. So I'm in section two. Then I want table of contents. Now I want to have my table of authorities start on a new page but I don't need it to start in a new section because it's going to have the same page numbering as my table of contents. So now I'm just going to insert just a regular page break. So there's my page break, table of authorities. So notice I'm still in section two now. So I've got my table of authorities, got my table of contents. Now I need another section break because this is going to be the body of my document. So I'm just going to type body of document one and body of document page two. So now I want to put in another break. And now this is going to be my appendix. So I've done step one. I've moved from the top to the bottom, okay? Now, could you do this with an existing document? Sure. If the document is already drafted, in fact, I think the best way to do this is go ahead and draft the document and then insert your section breaks after you draft the document. Okay? Now, here's where I'm going to go into my footer. So I'm going to go all the way to the end, right click and choose Edit Footer. So step number two, zap the sap. So what is the sap? The sap is evil. We don't want evil in our documents. Where this says same as previous, that's the sap. We want to get rid of that. The reason is you want each of your footers to be independent. So if you don't zap the sap, your footers are going to flow from one to the other. And you may have experienced this before. It's like you get them right and then you put something in a section ahead of it and it flows into it and you're just frustrated, right? So we're going to just get rid of that in each of our sections. So this says same as previous. I don't know why Microsoft did this, but we want to get rid of where it says link to previous. So if I click on that, see how I, that's zapping the sap. We got rid of same as previous. Now here again, we want to move to the previous section. What button do you think we could use to do that? Previous, previous yeah, previous. Now that's not real impressive here, but you got a, you know, a 100 page or 80 page brief, that's really a time saver. So again, we want to zap the sap. So we click the link to previous button, it gets rid of it. We click previous again, 
get rid of that. Click Previous again. We just go in all the way through the document. Keep doing that till you get to section one. So we got four sections, no sap. So now that we've got it set up the way we need it, all we have to do is put what we want in each of the sections. So cover page, we want nothing, right? No page number. So then we just click next, we're in section two. In section two, we just want to put in a page number. Now again, you do not want to use the built-in footers, so you don't go insert page number. It's basically a two-step process. You put your pointer where you want it, you put your cursor where you want it. In this case, I'm going to put it in the center. So I just press tab to move to the center. And then I can use my keyboard shortcut to put the page number where I want it. So Alt-Shift-P, page number's where I want it. Now, typically am I going to want a number two there? No. This is my section for table of contents and table of authorities. So what I want is a little I, right? So all I have to do is go to page number, format page numbers, and in the number format here, I click the drop down arrow and choose Romanettes there. And then I click start at and it defaults to little i. You with me? And then click OK. So that got that one right. Then I click Next. This is my body of my document. So I just got to put in my page number. Alt Shift P gives me a three. Don't want three. So page number, current position, Oh, no, no, I'm, you, that's another way of doing it. Just page number, format page numbers, start at, and I want to start at one. And then click next. This is my appendix. So I want my numbers to be A-1, A-2. So I press tab, type A dash, and then we put in our page number. Alt Shift P. We got to format that one. 